Hello and welcome to the video. I'm up here again. It's another one of those videos. This gentleman here is called Simeon. Say hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> now, this gentleman has done a lot of development work on Express LRS, and him and I have done a few videos. I'll put a link down below to the Express LRS uh, playlist. There's lots of basics covered in there because not enough of us are talking about some of the basic things. So, for example, there was a video a couple of weeks ago that talked about why and your Express LRS channels might be appearing to be super jerky and jumping into like six defined positions, and that's because it's in hybrid mode. That's how it's supposed to work. But we're going to talk again this time about another basic. And the reason that this gentleman is here is he actually knows what he's talking about. Uh, I'm a, just an enthusiastic amateur. The subject, as you've already seen from the thumbnail and the title, is around Express LRS telemetry. Now, the reason why this came about was because a gentleman was using Express LRS with RD Pilot and the Yapu telemetry script on his radio. I'll put links down below to those kind of things uh, if you want to go and find out more about it. Basically, the telemetry comes down from the flight controller and the telemetry script on your beautiful modern radio with a big color screen creates kind of a virtual cockpit with all the information on there. And I use it a lot, but he started to change things with the telemetry settings and then the Yapu telemetry script started to get incredibly unhappy. So that's really prompted this video for Simeon and I to talk about the fact that what is telemetry in Express LRS? What are the tips and tricks? What's normal? What's race? What are things like link and data? How are they different? How you work out what the telemetry ratio should be, because that's typically what you're playing with, and how that relates to things like the Express LRS speed and a couple of bits about Lua scripts. So if you're not interested in Express LRS telemetry and you don't use it at all, you know what? You can go and watch something else. If you don't understand all of that stuff, hang around, you're in the right place. So let's start at the very beginning and talk about the fact that there's two telemetry modes in Express LRS, isn't there? Yes. So in the Express LRS 3.0, as of uh, this recording, it's uh, the telemetry has been broken off into two parts. So the normal standard the telemetry that we used to have with the telemetry ratios, and then the race uh, telemetry, which is basically a super scaled down version of the telemetry that gives you the absolute bare minimum to basically maintain the link and have the radio not complain about it. And then everything else is just focused on having the most consistent and most stable control link that you, you can have during a race. So if you are racing and latency and maximum bandwidth out to your model is what you're interested in, then you want to have race set. For the rest of us, normal is probably where you need to be, where particularly if you're going to use it, where you're going to get telemetry back from an RD pilot or an INAV powered flight controller or even beta flight to get those that information back so you can use it in the radio. Now, in the descriptions about telemetry on the Express LRS website. And before we go any further, if you don't understand anything about Express LRS, the, the single place to go is on places like the wiki and the expresslrs.org pages. I'll put links down below. It's a fantastic resource. And all of this stuff is kind of explained in there. So if you're not sure about something, that's the first thing to do. Make yourself a cup of coffee and go and have a bit of a mooch in there. And in there, it talks about the fact that there's two types of of telemetry data one's called link and the other one is called data and why do we have two and what's the difference so the telemetry packets that you called link are actually we call them internally the sync packets they're basically uh, sent from the transmitter to your uh, receiver to make sure that the uh, system is completely in sync. There's no uh, loss of the uh, hopping channels or anything uh, unusual that may drift apart as uh, time or distance increases. So these are sent at regular intervals as well as when the link initially uh, fires up so that uh, the uh, receiver and the transmitter can uh, communicate with each other and uh, start sending the, uh, the channels across. While the data packets uh, are mostly our usual expected telemetry, such as battery voltage, GPS coordinates, attitudes, uh, angle of attack, etc. So basically what we're saying is that the, the link 
telemetry is kind of an internal thing to express LRS. It's how it's managing the link between the transmission and the radio. Yeah, the buying, the everything, all, all that. that good stuff. And the data is actually the stuff that we think of when we think of telemetry, yeah, yeah, yeah. like battery voltage, GPS, coordinate, altitude, ground speed, all that goodness. That may, That's perfectly explained. Thank you. So then let's talk about the meat of this. Now, when you go into the radio and the Express LRS Lua script and you start playing around, there's a couple of things. There's obviously the speed setting at the top. We've done videos on the past on what that speed is and how it affects the range. So the more, the faster that you pump that up to the F500 and F1000 speeds, the top speeds that are now available with Edge TX and Express LRS version 3.0, you pay a penalty, you get much reduced range. And that's something that lots of people uh, fall foul of but underneath that we also have the telemetry ratio and um, what is the telemetry ratio and should we could be playing with this initially it was the uh, default method of setting up uh, the telemetry uh, for the link but nowadays there's the default normal option and the uh, ratios are more for advanced people that want to fine-tune that last extra bit of performance out of the link so be it optimize it more for uh, telemetry for the radio or more for uh, more control uh, packets or vice versa so the ratios basically tell the system out of say how many packets let's say a hundred percent of the packets how many do we want uh, them to be uh, telemetry uh, packets back to the radio so, for example, 1 to 128 would be uh, out of those uh, 100%, every 128 is going to be uh, one uh, telemetry packet. And then the higher we go into the uh, ratio, the more telemetry packets we get, with 1 to 2 being basically every other packet is a telemetry packet, which basically cuts our controlling packet update rate in half. So if we, for example, have 500 hertz update rate, then if we put the telemetry ratio at one to two, then we're going to get only 250 hertz control rate and then again, 250 hertz telemetry rate. So what we're saying here is we're just selecting the ratio exactly as it kind of says on the tin of between the control and the telemetry packets, something like one to two, you're probably not, never really going to use that unless you're in a very telemetry heavy environment and then the, the models flying autonomously. You're probably going to want to be more in the what 132, 164, 1, 128 level where you're getting an update every 128th packet or whatever it is. Essentially, yeah, it's about have being in the middle ground or using the default preset of normal that uh, takes care of most scenarios for most people. But if you want to fine tune the controls, or for example, you have, as you mentioned, an autonomous vehicle or something that's more telemetry intensive, you can increase the, uh, the rate and get more telemetry to make sure that everything is more smoother and more responsive. So the other thing to talk about then is the fact that the f the speed of the link also affects how quickly you get the telemetry. If you're using one of the very fast speeds, then obviously that's banging away at a high rate of knots. That means that that 64th or 128th packet comes around so much quicker as you use slower and slower speeds. So for example, if you're using the 100 full or the 333 full, which is what I would use for something like a fixed wing aircraft to give me the maximum resolution on my auxiliary channels, then I might want to go from uh, 164 to 132 because the link itself is running more slowly. So I have to wait longer for that 32nd or 33rd packet to be a telemetry packet to be able to get that telemetry into the radio. So it's a function. Now there is this table on the Express LRS website that kind of covers this. So if you look down the left hand side, you can see the rate um, and then if you look and see what the ratio telemetry ratio is it kind of tells you how long you have to wait and on something like a standard setting of something like an air rate of 500 if you set it to 1 1 to 8 you're gonna have to wait 256 milliseconds or about four times a second you're gonna get some telemetry coming down to the radio and this is why when you start playing with this stuff, if you start having slower speeds and slower updates to telemetry, 
sometimes you can make it so that the things like Yapu telemetry scripts really start to run badly because the telemetry is coming in so infrequently that it's kind of becoming very jerky. Now, you've got some tips, haven't you, for th doing things in Ardu Pilot to make sure that that side is all optimized for things like Express LRS so that when you have things turned down that you don't get into too much trouble. Yes, so essentially for people that uh, are running uh, Express LRS with Ardu Pilot or any of the other uh, similar systems, make sure to set up the uh, receiver and transmitter according to the uh, yeah, expressLRS.org website with the uh, all the parameters set up according to your uh, serial port as well as the additional uh, flags, which include suppressing certain messages and as well as the non-standard uh, CRSF link speed, which is uh, 420,000, lower it down to 115,000, and then everything is going to be fine. As long as you also go into the uh, web browser of the receiver and set the same speed in there as well. Else you're going to struggle quite a lot trying to figure out why trying to move the sticks on the radio doesn't uh, turn into movement on uh, the model and why none of the telemetry is coming back. Be extra careful with the link speed. And that brings us on to the last part of this chat, really, which is you can, when you're running Lua scripts on a radio, get into a situation where you have excessive telemetry lost announcements and uh, get into those kind of issues. So is it worthwhile as maybe covering very quickly some of the tips and tricks to help with those kind of errors? Because I've had them myself where I've been playing with stuff and you're flying and the radio is constantly going telemetry lost, telemetry recovered, telemetry lost, and it becomes really, really distracting. Yeah, so as you mentioned, based on the packet rate and telemetry rate selected, the time between the packets changes. So in either OpenTX or EdgeTX, there's a certain threshold to where if the radio doesn't see any sort of telemetry coming from the uh, system after a certain set amount of time, it basically tells the radio that, hey, we lost the, the telemetry link and then announce it. And if we're right on the edge of that timeout, then the radio is constantly going to give us these announcements of telemetry lost, telemetry recovered over and over again. As well as the Lua scripts, for for example, the INAV uh, Lua script will flash all the uh, interface red, tel uh, telling you that there is not enough uh, telemetry. So in most of those cases, bumping up the telemetry rate or bumping up the packet rate will help a lot in terms of the time between the packets as well as the amount of data that's uh, being sent to the radio. So what I would normally do is in that situation is if you with everything else is happy, uh, if you've got the telemetry set to one colon 64, I would probably set it to one colon 32 and you'll probably find those issues go away. But using that chart on the Express LRS documentation website, if you see look at the speed you're running look at the telemetry speed you have and see the how many milliseconds you're having to wait i would just then go to try and reduce that and just reduce it until you get rid of those errors because the telemetry is still coming in it's just not coming fast enough for the radio to be happy so hopefully that's been useful for those of you and it kind of explains a little bit about what this stuff is. Now, lots of pilots won't care about this because you're not using telemetry and you're definitely not using things like the INAV or Yapu telemetry scripts. However, for those of us who are using Express LRS with those kind of systems, this hopefully is a little bit more information about how you set it up and how you avoid some of the common pitfalls. Again, massive thank you to Simeon for putting some time aside tonight to record this. Uh, we're recording this on the 13th of December uh, and it's really kind of him to kind of put this time aside to go through it and also for me just to make sure that what I think I've understood from the documentation is actually how it works and hopefully now you do too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.